so close, so close. That's the hole, you can see it right there. What's going on everybody? We're out here today to start a new series on the channel called Test the West. And in testing the West, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some historical items and we're gonna see if we can replicate some of the things we see in film. So today, what we're gonna be working on is we're gonna be shooting these old style lanterns, kerosene lanterns, to see whether or not they actually explode like we see in films, like we see in games. We're gonna be doing this in a safe environment, of course. Uh, I'm a professional, so you're not gonna to have to worry about any sort of weird uh, historian. Professional historian. Yes, thank yeah. you, Cyber. I'm a professional <laughs> professional historian. But to make sure that we're being as safe as possible, we also brought in this guy, and you all recognize him, right? This is my dad. And he is a firearms instructor, and he's gonna be overseeing everything to make sure we're doing it all right. So we're gonna have a good time. Come join us and test the West. I think for the first one, because again, you see this in movies, we're just gonna try to shoot just this glass lamp. Now, I don't think it's going to do anything by doing this. You guys? No. Um, yeah, I don't you think, think it so. will, or you don't think it will? We don't know. What's your guess? If you had to guess. I think that if we're going to shoot that glass, if the glass is going to go first, I don't think the flame's going to hit it. I think you're going to have to wait till you actually smack it underneath and make it happen. Then it's a boom. Yeah, you? You don't think? I, I think you'll just put it out. Yeah, I think so too. Unless the impact against the wall, and by the way, we have this set up with the wall because it more so mimics where you would set a lantern. So my thought is maybe if it hits and it somehow splashes or something kerosene up, you might get a little bit, but I don't think shooting the glass is gonna do much. No. Okay. I agree. We'll find out. All right, now because we believe in the utmost safety, we also hired Prospector Joe here in order to man the fire extinguisher. <laughs> I don't know. All right, going for the glass. All right, so that first one, uh, pretty much kind of what we thought. Uh, the glass was shot out and nothing, no uh, explosion of any sort. So we're gonna fire this thing up again. Well, another one of these. We're gonna shoot at the base, see what happens. All right, now as for the base of this, that's gonna be the second shot. We're gonna to try to shoot the base. I think that that has the best chance of exploding. You right think so there. too? Now, the only catch though is I think if the glass doesn't shatter when we shoot the base from sort of the impact, I think it might not explode. I think in order to get a explosion of any sort, I think we, we shoot the base and I think the impact of that is going to maybe shatter the glass, and I think the combination of the two might give us some sort of, not explosion, but something. But I think if the glass doesn't break when we shoot this, I don't really think we're gonna get it. Clear. All right, shooting at the base. Take one. I don't think you could, I don't think you could get a more accurate shot than that one. All right, despite a direct hit to the base, there's still no explosion, so let's keep going. I think if you shoot right here, and you can like actually break apart so that the, ah. the flame is exposed with the kerosene. Okay, you think shooting in the I, middle. I think that that would be the best chance of an explosion or, or flames. All right, so on this one, we're actually gonna be aiming for right where sort of the flame and the reservoir kind of connect, that gold area on the lantern. We think that that will probably give us the best chance of any sort of kaboom, if it's even possible. Let's see what happens. Okay, all clear. All right, so kind of shot the glass out again. Even though we are kind of 
using half a globe here. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot in that spot again. We'll see if we get it. Nice job, Prospector Joe. You saved everybody. All right, so we gave this a go. I would probably say that the movies kind of accentuate the yep. explosions. So we shot the globe out. We tried shooting it through the bottom. Uh, the only way that we could get any sort of flame appearing up here was to actually shoot it through the base with no globe and kind of have it spread a little bit on the back here. Not as spectacular as I hoped. No. Well, Alright. But we you tested a great it. Shot. This? We tested it. Look at that shot. That, you that was a really good shot. Look at that shot. Right at the base. Right at the base. I mean it hit right at the base. Look, even dented it in. Cause that's where I was aiming. Right. Good man. <laughs> that was good. That was an excellent shot. Professional historian and sharpshooter. That's right. Oh, you better believe it. Alrighty folks, some final thoughts and notes I wanted to add here. Overall, our experiments align with primary sources from the Old West, which seem to suggest that kerosene lanterns didn't explode when shot. Consider this article from an Ohio newspaper called the Lewiston Evening Teller, where during a train robbery, the conductor had a lantern shot from his hand, but it didn't explode. The Shiner Gazette in Texas published a similar article in 1896, where train robbers shot a lantern held by a brakeman, but again, no explosion. When a madman with a revolver tried to murder crew members aboard a steamer outside Vancouver, the owner ran to the pilot house when, quote, a shot hit the lantern he was carrying, completely smashing it and putting them in darkness. Hence, no explosion. Now this isn't to say that lanterns didn't explode for other reasons, they certainly did. But there's no record I could find of one doing so from being shot. As such, this appears to be a Hollywood creation. Speaking of lanterns, if anyone's concerned about the accuracy of the lanterns we used, just know that before making this video, I spent a lot of time researching this. The most popular lantern brand and model of the period was Ham's No. 2 Cold Blast, on sale in the Sears and Roebuck's catalog for a whopping 83 cents. In 1914, Ham's lanterns were bought out by their competitor, Dietz Lanterns, who a century later still produced the No. 2 Cold Blast, which is now called the Dietz No. 80 Hurricane Lantern, which is what we used for our experiments. As for the guns and ammo, we used an 1866 Winchester replica rifle made by Uberti with a 24 and a quarter inch barrel chambered in 45 Colt. It's possible that a different caliber might change the outcome, but I'm doubtful. If, however, you think it would, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. In reflecting on our test, I just can't help but think there's some other angles we need to tackle before we can definitively call this busted. And since we're up for part two, let us know what ideas, insights, or theories you've got. Now before you head down the trail, if you folks enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like, and if you aren't subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do. There's a lot more of this content on the way, so stay tuned, folks. Until next time, keep your nose to the wind, your eye along the skyline, and watch your top knots, builders. We'll see you out on the trail. We're taking proper safety precautions, YouTube. So don't get upset, and don't worry, you know, that, oh, I messed up, I missed my yeah. line. Shoot, go back, my bad. I'm an expert, so we should be good. Professional, not expert. Yeah, yeah so close, so close. <laughs> I was just rolling with it, but That's all right, I'm sure we'll have this in the outtakes. Yeah, I think that that would be the best chance of an explosion or, or flames. I know what we should do. Just stop talking and shoot it. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do that. Thank you folks for watching. If you want to further support my efforts, you can do so on Patreon or buy some gear for the modern frontier from the Man vs. History Outfitter shop. You'll find both those links down in the description. Alrighty folks, just before I go, I want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. A special thank you to my gold tier patrons, The Innocents, Ashley Gertensen, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce V, Cyber, Montgomery Johnson, Will S. Baker, Joshua Bale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Epic Dale, Sean Hatfield, Blake Graham, Dawson E, Song Freezes, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Sneaky Ninja, Noah5943, Jigsaw, Your Pal Mitch, Old Hog Gnome, Coco Rockout, Occam's Ghost, Reese Yearby, Ari Bacalers, Mythical Beast 60, and Gavin Abernathy. Also want to make sure that I thank my silver and bronze tier patrons as well. It's you Patreon supporters that allow me to keep doing everything I do here. 
Thank you all for your ongoing contributions. Let's keep growing. Let's keep making some awesome content. Much more to come, so stay tuned. See you all next time.